Hello and welcome to Fostim's Talks about MariaDB. Today I want to talk about the MariaDB optimizer and the changes that have been working on uh, it uh, for the last uh, month. Quick history of the MariaDB optimizer and why I had to do the task that I'm doing. There have been lots of people involved in the optimizer since I stopped working on it actively in 2003. And uh, we also have pulled in uh, uh, features from MySQL which also have uh, caused some good things and some bad things in the optimizer. The first version was very simple and uh, it was quite okay when you have uh, proper keys and thanks to a couple of small features that I added very early like the range optimizer which is still something unique in SQL optimizers. For, and it exists both in MySQL and MariaDB. It still had some weak points that people complained about and we have fixed uh, since then. And uh, one of the big things were, were the, uh, that we couldn't handle OR with different keys. If you had expression with one key, that works very good, but OR didn't. And uh, Table scans, they were kind of okay, but, but not very optimized. And we didn't have subqueries. And in MySQL 4.1, uh, we added subqueries, and we had add lots of optimization in, uh, in that, in different kinds of ways. So our subqueries has, uh, are quite ef efficient in many cases, and in many cases also the subqueries is transferred to normal queries. And also the normal optimizer, a lots of different optimizations was added over time. And join buffering is one of the important ones, I will come to that one. Histogram selectivity indexes. The problem is when you add a lot of new things in a complex product and by different people, things, uh, uh, some things, small things start to fall apart. And that has happened with the uh, optimizer, that uh, each feature works quite good by itself. And uh, for most cases, it works quite good with the rest of things. But if, if when you come to the de decisions of complex things like which should I, uh, opt optimization should I use when you have lots of rows and it's not clear which optimization is the best one then uh, there's still a lot of work to do. And um, we have lots of variables to define which optimization should be used. And, and uh, you can disable those, enable those, and you also can, for some like the greedy search that try to find the best join, you can define how deep you should search and uh, uh, how many uh, levels it should go down before um, not using uh, that table order anymore. And this starts to get kind of complex, and I think actually way too complex. And especially when you have to set multiple variables uh, just to enable one optimization. And we have the optimizer switch that uh, defines all optimizations, optimizations that uh, we support. You can turn each of those on and off. But as you can see from the slide, it's not that easy to see which optimizations are on at the moment and off. And that's something that I plan to fix in future changes. And uh, what I'm talking about me is that uh, uh, this year I plan to pay, spend a significant time on working on the optimizer. So uh, most of the optimizations are on by default, or at least on in the optimizer uh, switch, but it doesn't mean that they are really used. And then you have some optimizations that are uh, off by default, just because uh, uh, they, we have to find a way to do it uh, on automatically uh, and be able to choose it, that optimization on a cost base, uh, in a cost-based scenario. So that means that sometimes it's worst, first, sometimes it's better. 
and uh, some of this uh, opt optimization like the MRR cost base to be able to use that you have also to put MRR on which is kind of complex and easy to forget and when it comes to as uh, optimizations depending on several variables you have uh, the two I think worst one is optimized I use con condition selectivity which defines uh, uh, a lot of things uh, when it comes to which selectivity we should use histograms uh, uh, using um, persistent statistics and so on everything with one variable and then you have the join cache that tells you uh, which batch key access method we should use one of uh, eight uh, slightly uh, different ones and I think that uh, that this makes things very easy to mistake just because you have an optimization on like for example hash hashing uh, in the optimizer switch if you don't don't also put up uh, the John cache level to um, at least uh, four, preferably eight, you will not get the hashing involved, which is unfortunate because it makes the survey harder to use. So in most cases, the optimizer works decently as long as you have indexes that can be used for the query. Things start to fall apart slightly when there's uh, not indexes that can be used and there are di very different methods that can uh, could possibly be, be solve the query and in this case MariaDB doesn't do a really good job in some edge cases because uh, the costs are not really comparable bet between the, for the different optimizations are not, not really comparable uh, to each other and that's just because uh, when we have one developer doing one feature another person doing another feature uh, they don't check that the costs are comparable or haven't done that and there haven't haven't been a lot of efforts going through the all the co code and trying to ensure that all costs are cal calculated in exactly the same ways in in all parts and uh, what also makes it complex is that we have a, a test system called MTR that has several thousand tests and if you change slightly the cost uh, for some parts like uh, key lookups suddenly you have uh, hundreds of tests failing so it's uh, not that rewarding to try to change the cost because you have to do a lot of cost balancing uh, you fix something here and then things Fall, fall apart in other places and because when it's hard to verify cost change you basically try to keep things as they are but in um, uh, 10.4 in MariaDB we added the optimizer trace and that has made it quite easy to see where the costs for a query comes from and uh, you can just enable it by setting optimize address on and then you do select or explains and then you ask for information schema so what's the different optimizations that were considered uh, by the optimizer and the cost for each of those and they also added a way that you can trivially in MTR test you just add one line then you can add or get and explain for the next query which is very useful when you want to see what did change and it was thanks to the optim optimizer trace I was able to start on my current project which is what this talk is all about so I am have a goal to work towards where we can have, have all optimizations on by default and have a cost-based choice to decide which one should be using and you should also be able to uh, add or, or enable or disable optimization just by setting one variable not two or maybe three in, in some, some cases now and all cost calculations should be comparable and similar in all pieces of the co co code 
for example, in the current code, index scans are almost uh, regarded as infinitely fast because we only take into account uh, the size of the uh, index and how fast it is to sky, uh, scan that in an idle world. We don't take into account if there is uh, 10 rows in, uh, in that region or 1 million. Basically, the cost would be the same, assuming that the file size is uh, uh, similar. We also do uh, some costs, we add them later when all the decisions are made, like uh, the uh, time for compare, which is the cost for evaluating, evalu calculating the wear clause. And it uh, is, is currently done in such a way that for some types of queries, for example, the table scans, we don't uh, calculate the actual cost of the query. I also want to fix selectivity. We have some issues with selectivity that are known, uh, known, and in some edge cases, the selectivity, which should always be with zero, between zero and one, can get a high value, and that gives you wrong plans. And also, we'll add more things with the optimized address. And uh, because this, uh, my code will change the costs for a lot of things, I want to make, uh, wanted to make it easy for end users to be able to actually change the cost of different parts uh, just to be able to tune the optimizer. This is not meant so that uh, you should tune it by queries, but uh, uh, finding a good middle ground so you can run all your queries uh, with the same flags. That kind of is the goal and we want to have those uh, numbers in the MariaDB server over time. So what I've been doing is that uh, I've changed most of the cost handling to be done with a few functions in the handler interface. We, uh, in all parts of the code, we take into account the actual number of calls we, calls we do to get the key or a row or a key uh, or row access to a key. Uh, key. There's also no as asserts to ensure that the selectivity is always between zero and one, and that has allowed me to find and fix all the selectivity issues that uh, exist in the code. So we now take a separate cost for uh, just uh, finding a, a key or finding a row or finding a key in the row and copying the key to the SQL lever or copying the row to the SQL lever that we didn't do uh, before. Comparing with the work wear clause is always done in the same manner in all optimizations. And we know all calculation is done in the best access path and underneath, and not on the upper level who try to combine things generated from the best access path, because we actually did miss some things. And also, we had some code who assumed that uh, MariaD was run on a hard disk, and if it tried to calculate as, uh, the time of uh, the spinning disk and how fast we can do a reads from the disk. That is not really relevant anymore. And uh, even if some people have hard disks, if lots of things is cached in memory, those parameters has no value anymore. And of course, uh, when a lot of cost calculations change, there will be applications who will be affected by that. Uh, the goal is, of course, to ensure that uh, uh, all optimizations are better than ever before, and, uh, and especially the choice of when we should do table scan, index scan, index merge, or hashing is now much more accurately calculated than before. But of course, there can still be cases where the optimizer or the new optimizer will do some things differently from before and uh, not only differently uh, better, but also different to worse. That's uh, why these most important parameters will also be user defined so that uh, you can just change uh, the behavior 
to match your hardware. And, and which is uh, still better than with Maria, the current MariaDB where we, this cost or some of the cost already exists, but the only way to change those is to recompile the server, which basically never, nobody ever does. So go into the new visible cost variables. I think that the, probably the most important one is the optimizer cache cost, which says that uh, if, if it, we do a key or a row lookup, how, what's the chance is that we should go and find it in uh, memory or, or, or if we cached or if we have to go to the disk. The default, default is 50%, uh, which assumes that uh, half of the things we will find in memory. And uh, this uh, reduces uh, the cost of uh, key and row accesses uh, quite a lot compared to the old cost. We also have a, a much smaller cost uh, in uh, when it, we have to copy a row from the storage engine to the SQL layer. A slightly a smaller cost is copying just the index because the index is uh, uh, much uh, smaller and that does faster to uh, copy. I also added index next find cost, find cost. That is only for filtering that is still a smaller. And then we have time for compare with something that we had before, but, but didn't expose, which is the cost of comparing the where clause. Currently in MariaDB, we assume that uh, uh, finding a row, or actually finding a key from the uh, storage engine uh, is uh, five times more expensive uh, than uh, comparing the where clause which is uh, probably not accurate with current machines because the where clause could just be key is something and we can do probably hundreds or even thousands of those during a, a row fetch. But no, you can or will be able to change that. So all of those will be variables when I'm uh, ready. And uh, what's the benefit of the change in the variables? Okay, the base cost in my SQL and MariaDB has always been that a row fetch uh, or a key fetch is, uh, has a cost of one. And if you, that means also that if you uh, use a key to find a row, first you have to find a key. And if it's not a cluster key, then you have to use the key to find the row. So you, the, basically the cost of finding the row through a key is two. And um, no, with the optimized cash cost, it actually will be uh, one by default because it's a only 50% of the cost is calculated. But uh, now you have a, a few variables. By changing those, increasing or decreasing those, you can tell the optimizer that uh, it's better that we access few rows or uh, which will prefer keys, or we, you can make them smaller to say that we, I prefer to use uh, key scans. So when you have an explain who says that there is a table scan and you uh, think that that's wrong, you can just uh, increase the record copy cost and then uh, the table scans will be changed to a, a key lookup if, that, if such one exists. And time for compare is also uh, a way to ensure that you get less keys. There's a different difference between time for compare and record copy cost because in some cases, uh, like with filtering, we don't execute the where clause for all rows. We scan a lot of rows and we co compare row IDs and there's no where clause involved. But only when we believe that this is a row that is accepted, then we uh, add time for compare. So state of things now is that um, most of the uh, part that I discussed here is already done. It's done in the 10.7 uh, selectivity tree. Work is still in uh, progress and I s estimate that I have uh, still one to three months to get it in a state where I'm totally happy with all the cost changes. I have run through the, um, all MTR tests and 
in almost all cases uh, I'm more happy with the new plans uh, than with old ones. In the, those cases there are uh, changes. And in every case uh, where there have been a notable change, I have been checking the code to understand the change. That also have allowed me to find a lot of edge cases where the old optimize, optimizer uh, does something very strange uh, and chooses the wrong plan because of wrong cost calculations. So all this work has helped me to make the optimizer much better and much more predictable, predictable in how things are working. And I also got a lot of ideas how to do future cleanups uh, and more additions uh, to, to optimize that, to both make it more efficient and also much easier to use. And uh, hopefully this should be in 10.9. And if you have questions about the new release model, that will be in a separate talk. Okay, thank you.